Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. I thought I would do an impromptu video today on, well, on what happened last night, which was a, a bit of a cock up. Basically, um, I charged my electric car, my Mini, and heated my hot water, and at the same time, drained my home storage battery. And it's the bane of quite a few people's lives with home storage batteries. How do you stop them draining the energy overnight? Because when you do things overnight, you want to use the grid because typically you're paying less money for your electricity overnight. So you want to use the grid. So how do you tell the battery to not use its resources when, you, when you're doing those sort of things, when you're charging your car and heating your hot water using cheaper energy overnight? And it's when you start talking about this issue, about how to control the battery, that you realize that the devices that we have, the solar panels, the batteries, the inverters, the chargers, they're really quite dumb devices because they don't talk to each other. The solar panels just produce electricity and they put that electricity in your house. If you don't use it there and then at that instant, it sends it out to the grid. Now the battery sits there and watches and when it sees energy going out to the grid, it says, I'll have some of that and it starts to charge its battery, trying to balance the amount that it's charging to the amount of excess energy that you have. That's typically how these storage batteries work in conjunction with solar systems. They're not really integrated. One is monitoring the grid and reacting to it and charging when there's excess amounts of energy available that would otherwise be sent out to the grid. So that's what it's doing. It's sat there reacting energy out, energy in, and the battery either charges or discharges according to what's going on. So it's doing that independently. So when you've got devices like the MyEnergy Zappi and the MyEnergy Eddy, they're sat on your little home network watching just like the battery looking for excess energy and when it sees some excess solar energy it decides oh i did want to charge so i'll start charging um, i'll start heating my hot water according to how much surplus solar energy there is and this time if it starts to use more energy than is actually available it starts to draw from the grid then it ramps down the power and doesn't use as much. So it doesn't charge the car as much or doesn't heat your hot water as much. So there's some intelligence there that it's adjusting according to what it sees on the grid. It's not really reacting to how much solar energy it sees. It's basically only trying to work out how much excess solar you have because it's exporting and then use what's available. The amount that you see on the MyEnergy app for solar energy, that's really just for information only. So the big question is, if these things are sat there trying to conserve energy, so the battery is saying, if you turn a device on and there is no solar energy, like at night, then I will discharge the battery and use it to prevent you using the grid. That's the whole point of the home storage battery, isn't it? To save you using the grid energy and to utilize solar energy that you've stored previously. But what we really want is when there's cheaper energy available overnight, we want to be able to say, here, heat my hot water, but you want to be able to choose, do I want to use the grid or do I want to use the home storage energy? The bit that's missing, just that one bit that we want is the decision. Please let me use just the grid. Don't drain the battery. So what you need to do is to tell the battery somehow to not discharge. Now the My Energy apps, can't do that because they don't have control of the battery. They only have visibility of what's going on. The solar panels can't do that because they don't have control over the battery. And the battery can't do it because you haven't told it to do it in conjunction with whatever you're doing, heating your hot water, charging your car, or turning on another smart device. It doesn't know what your decision is. You may well want to discharge the battery. That might be a valid thing for you to do. You might be, for example, presuming that you're going to have lots of sunshine today while you're out, and therefore you want to drain the battery first thing in the morning so that while you're away, it will recharge up from solar energy. So there are good reasons why you might choose to drain the battery. But equally, like last night with Octopus Energy with a plunge price of minus one pence, I didn't want to drain the battery. What I wanted to do was consume grid energy and to be paid for doing it. And of course I got that wrong because I set the boosts and set the um, Zappi to charge my car and I forgot to turn the battery off. I forgot to give it some parameters to say at what times I wanted it to turn off. What I did do is set a parameter to say when to charge and while it was charging, it wasn't discharging. So for that period of charging, it worked fine, but I forgot for the periods that I wasn't charging the battery and I was doing something else, heating my hot water, 
I forgot to tell it not to discharge. So I thought I was consuming cheap energy from the grid to heat my hot water, and no I wasn't, I was consuming yesterday's solar energy that was in the home storage battery. And I woke up in the morning and the planned charge of the home storage battery that I had didn't last long enough because the battery was a lot more empty than I thought, so I misjudged it completely. So yes, lots of complexities and lots of issues. The problem with all of these things is they're not integrated. And what we ideally want is control over the battery, not control over the charging task to stop or start depending on whether there's solar excess and depending on whether it sees the battery. What we want is for them to be integrated to talk to each other. And this is, is it the holy grail? Is that what we're waiting for? And is this what we're waiting for from my energy, the company that has hinted many, many times that they are gonna be bringing out a home storage battery system. So in my thought process, that must be an inverter charger. So like the MyEnergy Eddy device that provides three kilowatts of power to heat your hot water on an immersion, what we're talking about is the same sort of device that can provide power into your house. So it's not providing power just to the immersion heater, but providing it through an inverter, inverting the energy from a battery into AC current inside your house. So if they can basically replace the insides of an eddy with a charger inverter, then you can plug any old battery that's compatible and uh, put it onto the My Energy app and network. And that way, there should be no reason why we can't say, boost my hot water at three in the morning, and by the way, please use the grid. Don't use the battery. And it should automatically make the setting changes to not use the battery. What I have to do and what other battery customers have to do are to set some more complex charging things. I think with the Victron inverters, the way to stop the battery from working is to set a charge period. So you'd basically say at three o'clock in the morning, start a charge. But you'd, you'd set a parameter to say, but don't fill the battery above 30% when you know you've already got 40%. So basically it's not gonna charge the battery, but it's gonna be off, not discharging during that charge period that you set. So a little bit complicated, but it works. The Give Energy battery um, doesn't uh, discharge the battery while you're charging also, but you can't really set a wider uh, charge period than you're actually going to use and for it to stop discharging. But it has discharging periods that you can set. So you can set periods of time where it will not discharge or where it will discharge. So you can set those timed parameters. So I've got to go to the My Energy app, set a timer to say boost my hot water at three in the morning. Then I've got to go to the battery to say at three in the morning, don't discharge energy. And you've got to do these things manually. And the same sort of issue is if you're using electrical devices on smart plugs, those aren't integrated either because they're not part of the My Energy network. My Energy can't control them. They're not part of your battery system. You can't control them. They're independent. So again, all these smart devices really need to be integrated together, not just to turn on and off, but to detect how much solar energy there is and whether you want to use grid energy or whether you want the battery to provide the resource. So there you go, there was my cock up last night. I set some timers and I forgot to go into the battery to tell the battery to not discharge. And if I get those things wrong, loads of people do. Most people, I think, want a system that just works it all out and sorts it all out. I really am looking forward to hearing from my energy when they release a battery solution of some kind and hope that it is fully integrated with these things. I really can imagine that suite of products being the first integrated smart set of products for heating your hot water, charging your car, having smart plugs, using a home storage battery, controlling whether you charge, discharge, and integrating with Octopus Agile as well, with some manual controls to say, I want to charge, I don't want to charge. I want to discharge, I don't want to discharge. So there you go, how to avoid draining your battery while performing tasks overnight when you want to use the grid with cheaper energy. And it's quite simply, you set the parameters on your home storage battery to say, don't discharge. And they're different according to whatever home storage battery you have. But it should be possible to effectively turn the battery off and sit idle to not, di to not discharge and to not charge as well. For me personally, software wise, the way I would like to see it is when you are turning on a device to consume energy, you should have a choice of using the grid or not using the grid. And that's what we want. We want a setting that tells the entire system 
which energy source do you want to use? Do you want to use just solar? Do you want to use the battery? Do you want to use grid energy? And it should be your choice as to what you want to do for each task that consumes energy. But that requires them all to be integrated. So in this wonderful world, there must be other people out there that did the same as me last night, that uh, we had a little bit of a plunge price. I consumed 12 or 13 kilowatt hours of energy when it was either free or they were paying me one pence a kilowatt hour. So there you go, lots of rambling on about all sorts of things. Um, but the issue that I was trying to talk about was how to stop your battery from draining overnight. How to choose whether you use grid energy or whether you don't. And at the moment, it's manual. You set the timer to perform the task, to use the energy, to try to use the grid, but then you've also got to set other parameters to say to the battery, do not discharge. What we want is an integrated system where we set a timer for a device to consume energy, such as your washing machine, let's say, or heat your hot water or charge your car. And when it comes on in the middle of the night, you want to use grid energy. And it should be easy for the battery to know. We want it to be automatic if possible, integrated. So there is a really good reason for waiting, not getting a home storage battery system to see whether my energy really release a system like this. Because if they do, there isn't another one on the market like it. It'll be the first, it'll be the best, it'll be fully integrated, it'll be easy to use, and you haven't got to set loads and loads of parameters to try and get it to do the right thing. Anyway, there you go, there's my thoughts for the day. That was my cock up overnight. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I hope it was useful to you, and uh, I hope it makes sense. I think I've rambled on just a little bit too much, so I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you again for more videos soon. Bye for now. Oh, by the way, new camera, new audio today. Is it any better? Let me know in the comments. Take care. See you again soon. Bye for now.